All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to be focusing on the uh, this back area here because the back is going to mostly define what the topology on the bottom looks like. So we should do that first before we continue with the uh, the under the underbelly right here. Even though this would be a lot simpler to make right now, it's going to the edge loops will match up more cleanly if we do the top first because the top is going to be more complex. And, Now the topology on these bone plates is going to look a little messy and that's because these plates are not going to be deforming as much as the rest of the body. They are supposed to be, you know, hard, bony surfaces. So we don't need to worry as much about maintaining proper edge flow. We just need to make sure that we get the outlines correct. Okay, if we're working on the underside of this bone here, I'm probably going to hide the fin. Don't need to hide the other one because we have symmetry enabled. So one thing that here that can save us a little bit of time is that if I put some points up there and then connect them, I can then go in with my points and faces tool and cut in some subdivisions. And that just saves a little bit of time and helps to make the model a little bit cleaner. I know that only saved me a few points worth of clicking, but later on, especially as we get towards the tail here, being able to draw a single very long polygon and then cutting it up will save you a lot of time. Whoa. Okay, again, when something like this happens, we can go with our points and faces tool. Right click and drag on the point, just drag it up to another vertex, let go, and it will merge them. And then everything will be fine again. One important thing to note here is that on the gel sacs, because we did deliberately make those asymmetrical, uh, as you see here, the retopology mesh isn't quite lining up with the actual high resolution mesh, and that's okay. When we apply the symmetry, we'll make sure that we go over to that region and we uh, re-snap all those vertices to the high resolution mesh so that it all lines up. Hmm. But for right now, it's safe to keep it on. It's close enough in shape that we don't need to worry about it. Okay, so this is an example of a vertice of a vertex that I don't want actually snapped directly to the high resolution mesh. It's as you see, it's cutting pretty deeply into our little creeping veins here. So what I can do is I can grab that one vertex with a point faces tool. If I just right click and drag it'll highlight in yellow meaning that it's been selected. And I can go to transform and I can actually move that vertice up a little bit to help sort of even out between these two points. Now I can hit enter to apply that transformation. Now I need to be careful because if I right click and select this again it'll re-snap to the high resolution mesh, which I don't want. So I'll do the same thing to this vertex right here and just move it up.
Okay, one problem that I'm noticing here is right in this area underneath one of our plates. And it's that there's a bit of a gap, a very narrow gap, in between the plate and the body. That's going to be very difficult for us to retopologize. And if we try to retopologize and ignore that, it may cause some weird artifacting in our normal map. So what we can do here is I'm going to go to the sculpt room. I'm going to grab my move tool. And I'm actually going to very subtly try and move the body to kind of meet up with that part of the plate. So that that gap is no longer as present or noticeable. And I just realized I need to do the same thing. Oh no, symmetry is enabled, so we're good on that, that end. All right. So now with that taken care of, that gap is no longer as present, and we can continue to retopologize like normal. All right, so now it's time to start worrying about sculpting the underside of this. So for this, once again, I'm just going to use the strokes. Now, here, as you'll notice when I'm drawing them, the spline points are pretty close together and the spline itself isn't as smooth as I would want it to be. So we can change that by adjusting the spline point density. So if I reduce that to something like, say, 30, then you'll notice the splines are much, the points on the splines are much further apart, and it's a lot easier now to make adjustments to it over such a large object scale. So I'm just going to draw these out here real quick. All right, so that's a start. Now, the topology here is very good, a very clean grid, but this is going to give us significantly too many polygons, especially for the bottom of this, which we're not gonna be seeing that often. This is far too dense. Now, I'm gonna hit enter right now anyway, 